I'm Virginia Prescott with the What You Need to Know Coronavirus web series from GPB. It is Friday, March the 20th, 2020, and we are going to talk a little bit today about the economy. First of all, the global economy and how that's trickling down and affecting people's concerns and their actual finances. Joining me today via Skype is Usha Ratcliffe. She is Associate Professor at the Goizueta Business School at Emory University. Usha, thank you for being with us. Thank you. My pleasure. We already know that the response to the coronavirus has been pretty devastating for the economy, and its predictions are that it will get much worse. But global markets appear to be a little bit more positive after a pretty raucous week. U.S. stock futures did rally today. What's changed? So um, you're right. This has been a hideous week for the market. This is like the worst since 2008. Um, now, earlier today, the market did bounce a little bit, but then it's given up all its gains and it has retreated as of now. So what the market is doing is looking for any good news that there's out there in the economy. So two things happened yesterday. First is the Federal Reserve um, announced a temporary loan program where they would give out money to banks across the world, central banks across the world, for a very low or zero interest rate. And that was huge because it helps with liquidity across the globe. So that was a big deal. The second thing was the Senate stimulus plan that affects all of us right here in these United States. So it has a lot of help for businesses and it has a lot of help for individuals as well. And it's supposed to uh, top around a trillion dollars and it's going to be taken up by Congress um, early part of next week. But then, you know, even with that good news in the morning, it's not dropped because now there is a sense of fear, right? There's a fear because the feeling is the jobless claims are going to go up dramatically this week and next week when the numbers get reported. On Google, the, the, the largest searched word, one of the largest searched things was unemployment. Mm. So there's a feeling that, oh my gosh, are people nervous? Are people concerned about their jobs and what's going to happen? So that's what's driving the, about this uncertainty and this fear is what's driving you know, the market to go down as of this afternoon. It's just a fear of what's happening. Right. Unemployment claims here in Georgia up 400 percent in the last couple of days. So this one trillion dollar economic stimulus bill still being worked out. No one's talked about how you're going to pay for it. Does this just become part of the deficit? Absolutely. This is because when the country spends more, just like any of us, if you spend more than what you bring in, you are in a deficit situation. The country has already been in a deficit situation over $20 trillion, about $23 trillion at this point. So here's another trillion that's being tacked on to that. However, this is a much needed sort of a measure to help people, to help small businesses, to kind of stabilize before you can get to the other side. So any and all help is welcome at this point. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about one or two thousand dollar checks being mailed out to people who need them. Now, July 15th is now the new official tax date. Are people expected to pay taxes on these these checks? Um, no, generally when the government helps people and they give out a stimulus rebate check like this, you don't have to pay tax on it. So that's probably the good thing about it because the government can't give you money on one hand and then take it away and tax the other. So the, the, the overall goal is to put money in the hands of consumers so they can spend money and that's going to help the economy. So that's the grand scheme of things. Well, you talked about fear earlier, of course. Confidence in the market is what makes it tick on some level. Yes. But how about not just for investors, but personal investors, people who are watching their 401ks, maybe shrink. We've been advised. Do not look at your statements right now. But how about people who are nearing retirement age? What would you advise them at this point? You are so right. This is so nerve wracking because if you are, regardless of who you are, you see your 401k drop by a third, that is a shock to the system. And especially so if you're nearing retirement, because now you have all these questions, can I afford to, can I do it, and what should I do? So the, the rule always is to never have a knee-jerk reaction, right? To not panic ever, right? So you have to think of it this way. If you're retiring now, you must be somewhere between 60 and 65, right around there. So you really do have time because you've got another 20 years or so. That is still the long term. And there's plenty of time for the market to come back, for the market to recover. So all you need to think about is what do I need for the here and now? For the next year, do I have enough to make it work? Do I have enough cash flow to make uh, to make to make my life the way I want it? 
But however, one does need to uh, pause for a minute and maybe talk to a personal financial planner and say a couple of things to, to look out for. First one is you do have to assess risk. Periodically, everybody has to do that. Now is a good time to take a good kind of a gut check on where is it you want to be and do you have a good financial plan to get you to where you need to be when it's time for that. So that's the first thing. The second thing is it's also time to maybe rebalance your portfolio a little bit and see if there's opportunities for there because when the market's down as terribly as it is, um, maybe there is a silver lining in there and you could maybe buy shares and you could maybe move from bonds to uh, stock or do something like that if your personal financial planner thinks it's right and appropriate for your horizon. So those are all things that I think one should take advantage of even um, in these times. So you think that that's something people should calculate now or yes. give it a little time for the market to come back? Well, you never know when the market's going to come back. You don't know how much, how long it's going to take for it to get, uh, for it to bottom up, right? So the expectation is that things will get worse before they get better. But what we don't know is how long is it going to take to get worse and how long it's going to take to get better. So you kind of have to take the market where it is, when it is. So as of now, there are probably some opportunities out there for some companies that are probably doing well even in this economy. Let's take technology companies. So people who are working from home, they need a lot more technology, different kinds of technology. So those companies are certainly doing well. Also delivery companies, if we can't leave the house and go outside, then maybe Maybe it is people deliver stuff to you. So what are those companies? So they will do well. Also, healthcare is a, is a very big area. There's a lot of emphasis on that. All of those companies, you know, are obviously in the right space. Uh, but there are others as well because, you know, this will not go on forever. And when the market comes back, people will all spend. And there's always a resiliency of the American people and there's resourcefulness of people everywhere. And the market will, in fact, come back. Professor Radcliffe, I want to thank you so much for your time. My pleasure. Thank you. And you can stay up to date with COVID-19 news and resources at gpb.org slash virus.